Well, it, you know, we were just talking, and I was saying that I think in the last, uh, I'd say year, year and a half, I've probably interviewed you the most. And the reason why is red carpets, nominations, awards. Last two years, you've had a massive, uh, massive time. How does it feel being able to do what you've been doing, representing Toronto, representing your brand, but just representing music? Blessed. Honestly, because I've been doing this for a long time, so to finally see it and feel it pay, pay off, it, it gives me a lot of satisfaction and motivation to continue doing what I'm doing. I'm doing something right. No, you're definitely doing something right. Um, and congratulations on the new album. I'm going to give this back to you. The light. the light. What number is this album? What number is this? This is my second full-length album. My first album came out in 2010, and that was a collab album with Rise Eshen from Ottawa. Uh, more electronic uh, and reggae bass uh, fusion. This one though is my baby because this is one I wrote all of the songs. Most of the songs, there's about uh, well, only one song on this album that was co-written with uh, Mikey Bennett who did uh, Cindy Lauper's Girl Just Wanna Have Fun. Wow. So, yeah, and so I'm very proud of it. Wow. Well, look, I'm going to take this back because we're going to talk a little about this in a moment, but I want to talk about the history, your history in the music scene and when it all began. When did this all start for you? Oh my goodness, when I was a child, I grew up um, in Jamaica, in the church with my grandparents and they had me going to church religiously every Sunday, Wednesday and Friday, so I was always in church or school. And so I got my start singing in the church choir. And then um, after high school, my mom was living here, so I was raised by my grandparents and after high school I came to Canada, still sang in the church, but then decided that I wanted to do my own music because I was hearing the call to write my songs and get my songs out there so I, I wanted to do that and after um, going to Sonica, sorry while going to Sonica I decided traveling tourism wasn't the route that's what I was studying music was my life path and it gave me more of a feeling like I was I belong because this is music I feel at home when I'm doing my music it, it's I couldn't see myself doing anything else and so I've been doing my music ever since. Being here in Toronto, does this help with the fusion of music and all the styles that you talked about? Absolutely, because it's so multicultural here. And uh, there's a lot more opportunities to be able to, to be successful, I would say, when it comes to expressing yourself. And Canada is so inclusive, and I, I don't feel like um, I'm limited in any way, as, as opposed to when I was in Jamaica. It's, you know, it's a lot more of a struggle. And it's still a struggle here, but I feel more... Um, of an opportunity to go out and do my thing because the resources are here for me to do that. But you've been able to, you don't just work on your brand through the music, but even your appearance too. Everything is important to you. How did you start to realize even the look? Because every time I see you, and I keep telling you, you you're walking out like you're in some catalog or something oh, like that. Amazing. Always amazing. How does that work for your brand and for your music? It's important because not just sounding sonically great, you have to look the part. And I'm a very professional musician, I would call it. And I studied the greats. I studied Grace Jones, Sade. I mean, you name it, Lauren Hill. And everybody always, Eric Kabadu, and they always look the part. Jimi Hendrix was one of my favorites too. And they always just look the part. And so I f felt that that's something I needed to pay attention to as well. Can you talk about when you released your first single? I mean, from back in the day, and also, because you said the album we're talking about right now is the second one, your first album too. What was it like releasing your first single, and what was it? My first single came out in 2007 on the Kicking Rocks uh, EP with, uh, with uh, Arms Carum and um, Cecily. Um, you might have heard of them. And uh, that was... Um, very exciting for me because I had done a, a demo before that, about 2005, that wasn't unfortunately released. But 2007, I got the opportunity to do that with Aram, Scaram, and Cecily, and it was exciting to be able to finally hear myself on the radio and accomplish something that I was working so hard towards uh, um, um, fulfilling for so so long. And so after that release, I got more confident, um, made a lot more relationship, um, built on, on the relationships that, that were available to me at that point and kept on moving forward and every opportunity to, led me to this point. And what about that first album? What was the first album? It was uh, called Kicking Rocks and it was an EP. I think he had uh, seven songs on it, five originals and two remixes. 
So when you're releasing all this music and then you start hearing from the Academy and they start saying, guess what? You're a Juno nominee. What was that like for you? Oh my God. That, cause you know, the Junos to Canada is like the Grammys to the States. And so when I first got my, my when I got my first nomination, which, which was for um, radio, and that was on my second uh, EP release, um, I was elated. We, my team, I don't have a very small team. We were just so humbled by it and encouraged and I cried and I, I, it was just exciting. And now I'm on my third nomination. Hopefully this year we'll get a nominated nomination again. I'm not sure, but whatever God has in store, I am open to it. Now here's the thing, because we talked about how eclectic you are musically. Can you talk about, because people don't get a chance to see this, Juno Awards last year, okay? You were playing, you were on stage with other groups from different genres. Talk a little bit about that, please, because I was in the audience for that. Oh, thank you. Um, I was uh, performing on stage with the Arkells, because I also, I'm an Arquette right now with the Arkells. I, you know, for me, I just love music so much, and I'm, I don't want to be put in a box. I want to be able to express myself as much as I, I can, and they do rock, more of a rock pop feel, and... My music is reggae f fusion because I, I, I inf uh, with influences from jazz and uh, R&B and soul and hip hop, but to be able to express myself and sing with bands like Michael Bublé, I've toured with Michael Bublé, Anjali, Krisha Turner, and now I'm working and so many other ones. But now I'm, I'm working with uh, Arkells. Uh, I couldn't have planned this out. The universe has been amazing to me. Well, the universe brought us this music, the light. Now let's talk about this. What is the album about? And what's the lead single for this? The first single that came out was uh, Don't, Call, Call, uh, Don't Count Me Out. Um, and I wrote that in Jamaica when I went down to, to uh, you know, get a feel for what I wanted to write about and, and find the producers that I wanted to work with. Um, and I, I, during that time, long story short, I found out that I had nodes on my vocal cords. And so I had to be put on vocal rest for a whole year. Really, I was I couldn't I was at to heal, and so I did most of the writing during that time, and I, I, at that time too I was going through a spiritual awakening I call it, and um, the album is about finding your inner light, the thing that connects each and each and every one of us, and expressing that to the world, and that's what the light is all about. Is that a scary thing? I know Shania Twain talked about going through something like that too, where she just could not sing. She had to actually retake vocal lessons to be able to sing. Were you worried at any point that maybe the career might have been done? You know what? I did think of it, but I didn't allow myself to stay there. I'm one, a person that believes in putting out positive energy and not resting in a negative place, because if you do that, then you'll probably manifest that. So I w was very much so in the mindset that this is only right now, I'm, I, this is happening for a reason, I'm only, I'm going to come back bigger and stronger. And that's exactly what happened. Like, what's way stronger now. What's the rest of the album? Uh, same type of uh, song? They're motivational songs. They're inspiring. It's about empowerment, female empowerment. Some talk, there's um, ending gun violence. I, I talk about because um, my uncle got killed in Jamaica from gun violence, and and there's so much of that going on. So I wanted to speak on that and 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 talk about also social issues like um, not allowing society to, to dictate who you are as an individual, but to follow your own inner voice, your intuition, and, and live that. You've been, like I said, you've been very busy. I've seen you on different morning shows. You've been traveling around the country, around Ontario. What's happening in 2018 for you? 2018 is all about touring. In Canada and outside of Canada, that's the goal. My first show will be in, for the 2018, um, uh, this is uh, New Orleans. I'm doing the NOLA Jerk Festival in New Orleans. So I'm excited about that. That is cool. Uh, social media, where can we go to follow you? Social media, I'm on Instagram under Amoy, A-M-M-O-Y-E. On Twitter, it's Amoy's Music, A-M-M-O-Y-E-S Music. On Facebook, it's Amoy. And uh, if you want to hit me up on um, by, uh, for bookings or anything, it's Amoy's Music at gmail.com or go to my website, amoymusic.com. Always great talking. As we speak, we're heading into the holiday season. Merry Christmas, happy holidays. All the best for you for 2018. Thank you, Rudin. Same to you, my love. Thank you so much for having me.